What's going on everybody, this is Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds, and today we're going to look at another one. This is the Evercade EXP. This is not one of our usual emulation handhelds. This one actually plays licensed cartridges. While still emulation underneath the hood here, uh, this is more like a traditional game console, and that's kind of fun. So let's see what it can do. Let's dig in. Okay, so let's just open this up. I got this one from Amazon for $140.99. That nice two-day prime shipping. I've seen these go used for around 110, 120 bucks. This is the follow-up to the Evercade VS machine that was out a few years back. Uh, this one they have a white skew and i've also seen rumor of a black skew but i cannot seem to find that one so uh, i went with this and it also has tate mode which is interesting uh, it connects to a tv so it has an has an hdmi output of some type it has some scan line filters it has has save states uh, comes with 18 built-in capcom games including street fighter mega man x 1942, Ghouls and Ghosts, Captain Commando, Final Fight, and it has an IRIM cartridge in it that has six other games. Ten Yard Fight, In the Hunt, R-Type, Battle Chopper, Lightning Swords, Moon Patrol. There's also other carts that you can purchase, uh, as well as other accessories, such as a carry case. This one holds a couple of Evercade carts and the Evercade itself. This one is on Amazon, I will link it. Now this does have Wi-Fi, the battery lasts about four to five hours and it has USB-C for charging. Enough of this lollygagging. Retro gaming leveled up, Evercade EXP. All right, it's just kind of sitting loose, flailing about in here, I don't love that. I had previous, previously gotten a used one on Amazon to do this video, and I started the video, and then I realized that the shoulder buttons were dead, and none of the buttons worked when when in the menu. So sent that one back. This is a should be a brand new one, but it does have some dust on it. So okay, so here's that IRIM cartridge, separately sealed, and that Capcom cart is actually just going to be games that are built into the system itself but this is fun i like that they have a nice little cartridge like back in the day and it has pictures oh and it opens up looks like a genesis case a little bit that's fun has an instruction booklet oh very very nostalgic I miss the days when they actually used to put effort into making the instruction booklet in colored instructions, no less. You know how rare that was? The carts themselves feel nice and uh, cart-ish. Little tactile bump right there. We also got a USB-C cable for charging, a quick start guide here, and then, oh, the Capcom collection booklet too. Oh, and it has moves for Street Fighter, Mega Man. Oh, so cool. I love the artwork in here. Mega Man X. You know, I've been a big proponent of only doing digital downloads, but I got to say, I'm changing my mind on that a bit in the last year or so since the, especially since the uh, the 3DS e-store was closed down, the e-shop. You never know when your digital goods are going to go away. You bought them, you paid for them, but you don't own them. You own a license to use them while the servers are up, while the content is being hosted. The only way to truly own a game is to go out and actually buy it, physically hold it in your possession. So that turns me on to more of these type of systems that are playing the games that I want to play, but you own the game. That's satisfying. Look at that, and it perfectly sits in there. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, this matte plastic feels very good 
feels high quality. I love the little bit of gray. A little bit of uh, texture there. It's fun. You got left and right for volume up and down. USB-C headphone port. You have the T for Tate mode. That's going to flip it vertical for your shmups. Looks like you have easy access to get inside with these screws. As far as the feel and the ergonomics and the buttons, L1 is nice, easy to press, clicky. Same thing with R1. L2 and R2 are digital with an analog style. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, the D-pad, a little too mushy for me and kind of chaotically pivoting around the place. This might be decent for fighting games, but I, I wish it was a little more precise. This is maybe too loose for my liking. Face buttons, while pretty short, it feels similar to maybe the Logitech G Cloud for how much travel you get there, but easy to depress mushy rubber membrane style maybe similar to the analog pocket as well no issues there they feel good clicky start and select and you have a and b that's probably when you press tate mode that's going to be your command and face buttons when you're playing like that well let's turn it on and you have of course hdmi mini hdmi out there Hold the start button, power button for two seconds. You get your LED light there. All right, connect it to Wi-Fi. Oh, good old EULA. You have to scroll all the way down for this EULA. The end user license agreement. That's the longest in history I've ever seen for a handheld. Sorry, you didn't agree with our EULA. Go, go read our EULA. Can't you just skip to the end? Nobody reads this. Yes, I get it. I'm playing a video game console. I won't sue you. Hmm. Comes with the battery already partially depleted. All right. Ten yard fight. Battle chopper in the hunt. Lightning, lightning swords and moon patrol are type. So that's what's on the cart there. Got to get used to the A button is the action button. Ooh, hidden games. Oh, wait, you have to play through some games to unlock these hidden ones? What? In the world? That's cool. All right, this thing's drawing me in. We got Bionic Commando, 1942, Breath of Fire. Now, I hear that there's carts on this that go all the way from, like, Atari era up through... I saw 40 winks on one of the cartridges. Does that mean this plays up to N64 in, in emulation? Or does it stop around the PSP era? And I know it plays Jaguar games, too, like Cannon Fodder and others. So that's really, really interesting. I wonder what CPU we're running under the hood. Uh, but it has an 800 by 480 IPS high resolution display with the built-in Wi-Fi, 720p out through the HDMI port, light and compact design, four to five hours of battery life. Yeah, I mean, the screen looks really good. It's a little too bright to show on camera right now, so I'm gonna try to lower that a bit. Let's go, let's see what we get in the settings. Oh, full screen, I mean, sure. Let's full screen it, why not? No scan lines, no shaders. We get bezel options. Ooh, Tate mode bezels, huh? Nah. I've never been one to use bezels. Dynamic rate control. Helps games that normally run at non-standard refresh rates run more synchronized, making the game faster or slower to sync the audio and video output of the game, meaning it's playable. Themes, are we different themes? Dark blue and gold, Evercade EXP or grid. Oh man. 
That's fun. So you get some themes out of the box here. There is a new firmware update. Let's update that. They release over-the-air updates for this thing. I guess that's not working right now. Now, apparently, just doing a little bit of sleuthing here, apparently the Evercade is hackable, and there is a homebrew cartridge, a writable 128 gig DIY cartridge that you can purchase that allows you to sideload extra content on. So it has, that's cool, it has some information about the game, how many times you've played, it has some moves and controls, it has your last save if you've played it before. All right, let's see how the speakers are. So you have down firing speakers. Aren't the most powerful, but uh, it sounds it sounds pretty good. I already regret stretching the aspect ratio. Too late to turn back now. We've made our bed. Now we need to sleep in it. Yeah, buttons are responsive. One thing with emulation is you might run into some latency, but uh, if that's the case, I'm not noticing it here. I wonder why they made the screen 16 by 9 when this is focused on pretty much only retro content. I know that there's some new indie games, some modern games that uh, get released for this. You know, which is really awesome, but even those games probably benefit from being in 4.3. So I have to wonder why the decision was to make this uh, 16 by 9. I just think overall this could have been better, just a little bit shorter. Don't get me wrong, the screen looks good. This isn't... Uh, this isn't like iPhone 6 panel in the Retroid Pocket 3 good. But it looks pretty good. Let's see, so there's a menu button there. Looks like we get quick access to quick save, quick load, save, load, controls, display settings. Okay, so that's great. So we can actually change our mistakes here. Let's do a shmup so we can test Tate mode. Oh, that's cool. There's different options here. So you can do Y for a competition mode. Do you want to launch competition mode? Using this mode will allow you to prove your true mastery of the game. However, in-game save and save states will be disabled. Nah, I'm not ready for that yet. So we're gonna press the Tate mode. Okay, there we go. We're stretching. <laughs> we're stretching so much. Oh God, we're stretching. Not in a good way. That's so bad. Oh, ouch, it hurts me. It pains me. Uh, no, 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 no. All right, Tate mode. <laughs> Go back from that. No. Why is this my life? Now I'm taking my best guess at what might or might not be a shmup. Aha! Hey, we're shmupping. There we go. Still, they made the screen too long. And I guess it's for this particular mode for the carts that actually take up the entire space there. Pow. Reminds me of a pow kitty. Not the most comfortable to hold in this mode, I gotta say. It might it might benefit from some sort of ergo grip. Let's see what these IRM games are. Horizontal shmup. Moon Patrol. Damn. Yeah, the controls are really responsive. Gotta love that. So if I suck, it's because I suck. Not any fault of the games.
And these fools are coming at me, and... Come on, you. Aliens always trying to come... Oh, fuck. I don't know about that right now. We got lightning swords. I haven't played a few of these. I like that they left the... Uh, the schmaltz. Epilepsy uh, inducing intro. They left that in. Nice. Good. Fun. In the hunt. In the hunt. It's the eye of the hunter. It's the thrill of the fight. That's not the right song. We've got more arcade games here. We're about to be in the hunt. We are a submarine attacking other submarines for submarine dominance. Submarine reasons. Bionic Commando is always fun. Captain Commando, Breath of Fire. The original Mega Man, Ghouls and Ghosts, Strider, Street Fighter 2, Mega Man X, Mercs, Volgus. I guess we can do some, some Strider. Oh, wow. This is the arcade version. Smooth animations, no screen tearing. I would say the panel is maybe a 6.5 out of 10 as far as IPS panels go. And again, I really think a missed opportunity to not just go with 4.3 here. One thing that was nice about the VS, the first edition from Evercade, is that it could be consoleized. Now, technically, yes, this one you can as well. Just plug it into your TV. But there's something about having an actual console. That's legitimately just a console. And I don't know. I mean, Mega Man, for me, is the highlight on this, on this uh, system here. Street Fighter... We could test out that D-pad. But for $140, you're getting something that you, you don't have to rely on any kind of piracy or shady websites or any of that stuff. You just play the game. And it comes with plenty of games right out of the box here that's well worth, I would say, $140 to enjoy. And with plenty of expansion carts to expand that library out. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid system. I don't know how much I'm going to use it in the long term, though. Just, just because uh, I kind of want a little more. I kind of want, if it's going to be focused on modern with this 16-9 aspect ratio, then I think it should have included games suited for that aspect ratio to begin with. Uh, these games are all stretched, which isn't the best. But if you were to track down that homebrew cartridge, boy, you could get a retro stew going. I don't know. I mean, that might be the way to go in this. It does start to get warm, which is surprising for the systems we're playing on it. So there's a vent right there. Let's give it a quick vent smell. Yep, smells like plastic. Okay, confirmed. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so it has Capcom and Blaze. Oh, well, that makes sense on there. Yeah, it's getting pretty warm. Not hot, but warm. So it looks like the five hidden games are 
N N N N N N for NES, Gotris for Master System, Space McRacy for NES, Grib Gribbly's Day Out for Commodore 64, and Kubo 1 and Kubo 2 for NES. And as far as how to unlock, uh, entering the codes, it is advisable to do it all. Okay, so there's codes that you put in to unlock these games. That saves time. S-E-I- Okay, so we're going to pull the cart out. Can you pull it out while it's... I guess you can. Okay, so we're going to do R1, L1, up. Do it on the cartridge screen. I see. And then, 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 then. Oh. Oh, it launches Tate mode by default. Hey. Hey, this one's using the full thing, I think. Oh, God, this is hard. Whoa. <laughs> This is like that uh it's like that knife game that you play with your hand out on the table where you try not to get stabbed by a knife. A little safer than that, but some similar level of anxiety. Oh this is hard. This is tough. I said quit. Quit. Quit, I says. I kind of wish there was fast forward and rewind like you get on some uh, in RetroArch. Even on Switch, you get rewind in some of the lower end emulation. Some sort of Tetris situation here. Very good. Very fine. I just want to unlock all the carts. Uh, Space McRacy, without a cartridge, you press R1, L1, and down. Spacey McRacy. Hey, there it is. Definitely can tell this is a Commodore 64 title. Looks like we're a frog. What's this? Ah! What do you guys think of the Evercade EXP? Is this one that you're thinking of picking up? I would say for the collectors out there that want to have all the gaming systems, that want to collect cartridges, and they're really all about it, this is pretty awesome a lot of these games of course aren't purchasable in other places and so this might be the only place to legitimately get them these days but being so very spoiled by emulation over the years i can't help but wonder if we aren't better served by one of the thousands of retro handhelds out there for emulation get everything how you want it and then you're going to be setting up the emulation the front end uh many of the UI setups, but in the end, you're going to have it exactly how you want. You're going to have some maybe retro achievements. I mean, this is a really cool concept and I appreciate it. You know, I think if the screen was just a little bit crisper and maybe if it was a four, three aspect ratio and maybe even had the option of an, of a left joystick down here, I think those features would make this an easy recommend. Also the all white, well, come on, it's just so 2022. This is 2023. Give us a green option at, at minimum. Uh, but we have a white skew and the black skew. Not bad. I'm sure you can get screen protectors for it. You have this handy dandy carry case. Looks like that. Yeah, put them to the side. I bet you could get two in there. I might just for not much more money, though get a Nintendo Switch, like a Nintendo Switch Lite. This is $50 more. You can get them used for $150 easy. Very fun. I think for the first little more money, if you're going to go widescreen, this can play a bunch of modern stuff too. And you can like hack it and emulate and do fun stuff. On that note, thanks everybody for watching. If you do like this content, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your grandmother, tell your mom. We're here. We're going to talk about retro handhelds. And uh, patrons, you are appreciated. Thanks to everybody on this list. Once again, this is Stubbs from RH. Take care of your handhelds and take care of each other. We'll see you next time.